He has an interesting record. He's combined over 100 times on The Tonight Show and The Letterman Show. He's been a fa such a favorite guest on those shows. Uh, I, I'm sure you know the comedy of George Miller. George! George! George Miller! Thank you. Where's that lady going? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Well, I've never been there so popular. Very popular. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Some people are leaving, however. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. How are you doing? I am too. Uh, I got my recorder backstage. I'm recording, so even if you don't like me, try to laugh anyway, because I've already got a lot of tapes where I eat it. <laughs> I'd like to start off tonight with an old joke. I've been doing this joke for years. If you know this joke, don't tell it to your neighbor. Okay. This guy went to college, and he took a course called Married Survey 101, and the first day in class, the professor asked him, he said, how many kissable areas do you know? He said, five. And a French guy in the back yelled, 119. <laughs> he asked another guy, the guy says, I know eight kissable areas. And the French guy in the back yelled, 119. He asked a real innocent looking girl in the front who said, well, I only know one kissable area, the lips. And the French guy in the back yelled, 120. <laughs> My mom told me that one. She's in the state hospital waiting for Beavis and Butthead to come on. So they were very nice to me. They were very, very nice to me. They met me at a limo at the airport last night here on the show, and the driver was not the brightest guy in the world. I got off the plane. He's holding up a big sign with his name on it. I used to stay at this second-rate hotel in uh, Los Angeles. I stayed there many years ago, many times, and they weren't very good, but they were trying to act like they were better than they were, like they had a little card in every room. Did we meet your expectations? Uh, yeah, I thought it would be crappy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, let me ask you some questions. Let me grill this audience. I've been wondering this uh, for months now. Why would anybody shoot anybody? over Joey Buttafuoco. <laughs> I got a lot of questions like that I can't answer. If you have Alzheimer's, you get partially cured, then do you have some Heimers? Does Richard Dreyfus really have a stupid brother named Doofus Dreyfus? <laughs> if somebody says they're a pathological liar, should you believe them? <laughs> if you get high and then pray, does it count? What is it? What do you call those things when you, you kind of almost list things? Well, that's, I just call my questions. I say I'm going to grill this audience and find out the answers. I don't know the answers. These are just questions. I flip out about ten questions in a row. So uh, they're, they're sort of like almost quickies. You Very know. quick, yeah. They're pretty yeah. fast. Uh, if someone called you a pathological lie, would you believe it? Right. Uh, now, why do you think they laugh? I was trying to figure that one out. I don't out. know, and I, you know about that joke, it's very funny because I thought, is that too easy of a joke? Has somebody thought of that joke before? Is that too easy? And I thought, I haven't heard it, I'm going to just do it anyway. What do you think? Our, our, our audiences are maybe a mixture, but our performers are usually, I would say the average in the 30s, perhaps. I would say that say. too, yeah, sometimes you get a little and, older. Um, you know, the hell with it. The audience left just as loud, if not That's louder, right. at you. Although if they get too old, now you know, I, I always, I was telling the story to Louise, who was with me at this time. We went down to, uh, uh, I worked with Stephen Eady at Harrah's a few years ago in Atlantic City, and each show just worse than the show before. Older. Very tough. Very tough. Yeah, I think when they get to a, a certain age, then, then I can't get. Hey, I went to the Grand Canyon for the first time. Boy, what they say about it is true. You stand there at the Grand Canyon, you feel so inferior, so insignificant, and then I realized something. I felt like that before I got there. <laughs> I haven't been kind of depressed the last few days. I read this article that said your car reflects your personality. I don't have a car. <laughs> Do 
But I got good news last year. I got back $8,000 on my income tax. The bad news is I'm going to prison. I think Dr. Kevorkian should go to prison. Then he could assist in doing away with the people on death row. This is my third prison joke in a row. This is my impression of David Letterman in prison. Dave in prison. How much time we got? How are we doing on time? <laughs> Here's my second impression. This is Jeffrey Dahmer at his trial. Boy, that judge sure looks good. What can I tell you about myself? I'm a strong supporter of gay rights. Anything to stop all that bitching. <laughs> Pro and con, okay. So I'd been told, you know, I always overreact every situation. My first time when I left Seattle, my hometown, to go down to California, very large gay community down there, so I overreacted. My first day I'm in town, I'm at the counter of a restaurant. There's a guy right next to me. I thought, well, maybe he is. If he says anything, I'll come right out and ask. So finally he says, say, would you please pass me the salt? I said, yeah, here you go, are you gay? He said, no, do they use a lot of salt? <laughs> what else can I tell you about myself? I've never been accused of sexual harassment in the workplace. You know why? I have never been in the workplace. <laughs> No, I had a lot of regular jobs, and honestly, when I worked 9 to 5, I was a conscientious employee. I used to call in sick to places I didn't even work. I can't make it today. You don't even work here. Well, the hell with you then. I'm not coming in. My first job in California, I worked at a Sizzler restaurant. I was a salad bar cheater spotter. Quite a few of us know who we are, apparently. Okay. When I would apply for a job, I'd say anything to get it. I'd lie about my qualifications. Are you bilingual? Oh, sure, I'd do it with anybody. I don't care. I just... <laughs> so I grew up in Seattle. I spent a lot of time over in Squirt, Washington. Tiny, tiny town over in eastern Washington. Squirt. The bowling alley in Squirt only has one lane and three of the pins are missing. That'll give you an idea. <laughs> perfect game is 208. It's very peculiar. <laughs> Don't try to compute that mathematically. I'm not sure if that's correct. <laughs> My Uncle Lewis comes from Squirt. I feel sorry for that guy. He can't get medical insurance because he has a pre-existing condition. He's an idiot. He says he likes the home shopping network because there are no commercial interruptions. <laughs> In a sense, um, I always felt that something like show business, and more specifically stand-up comedy, standing there up, uh, up there on the hustings and doing these jokes kind of keeps you young. Uh, I don't know about that. I hope so. I hope so. It's, I, I feel like I'm, uh, you don't feel like you're as old as you really are. It seems like you still think of yourself That's as a right. kid, that That's thing, right. you know? Yeah. yeah. Especially when you're doing this kind of thing for a living, it's kind of, it seems like it's kind of, uh, like you say, maybe a young man's game, hopefully.